If you have been following this channel or you know me, then you know that one of the things that have been keeping me up at night over the past two, three months is because I haven't been able to harvest my livestock feed. If you are not used to what we do here, here at Sementia Farm, we practice intensive system of farming. What does that mean? That means that I believe that in order for us to scale in the livestock business, either you're doing goats, cattle, sheep, pig, in order for you to scale and be able to do it commercial, that means that you need to have a good source of feed, right? And that's why many farmers like myself only can do goat farming, cattle farming at a very small scale. It's because we have no source of feed and therefore we are forced to do random grazing. That is not the future if you really want to do livestock farming as a business. And that's why I have gone to the length and the breadth roaming around the world to find a grass that I can plant and feed my livestock with. Over the years, I've planted this grass called Brachyria grass, which I imported from Brazil and Mexico into the country and grow it for my livestock. I've grown five acres. Currently, I'm standing on an 11 acre of land. And as you guys know, I'm also building the biggest um, goat pen in Ghana, in Africa. I still haven't been proven wrong, so I'll say in Africa, but I definitely know there might be a few people in South Africa that I probably have a bigger structure than I do. But that's just by the way, right? So my goal is to be able to scale the livestock industry and be able to do it commercial so that tomorrow when you want to start a goat farm, a cattle farm, you can come to a proper farm and buy a breeding goat and not go to the market and buy sick animals for your farm. That means that you're even starting the wrong way. So this is my vision. And as I said, this is a 11 acre. I have about 130 acres that I've planted this grass on as well. The issue has been that this grass, so it's a seed. You put it on the ground in five to seven days. What happens is that it grows back. Once it grows within, in the rainy season, let's say five, four, four to six weeks, you can harvest it again. Once you harvest, it comes back again about six weeks later, then you harvest again. The painful thing is because I have been able to grow at this scale, and I have about 130 acres, I can't be able to, to, to cut or harvest them by hand or by, you know, small machines. And that's why I went into mechanical way of harvesting this so that I can be very efficient by harvesting quickly, it grows back so that in a year, I can actually harvest a couple of multiple times, you know. But unfortunately, this year has been bad. Um, we have had issues with our tractor, our um, mower, our slasher, the bay line, the rake is the only thing that we don't have a problem with. And it's taking me months up to now. My tractor is still not fully fixed because to get a, technical, a technician or a technical person to even come and take a look at it is a problem. And that is what has been keeping me up over the past three months. I have this grass that is way above the level at which I should cut it. The one on the 130 acres is even crazy. It is taller than me, guys. And I can't still cut it. That is money wasted. That is my plans for the year. That's feed that is going to waste. If I had cut it, if, I had, if I, my machines were good, I would have cut it about maybe two, three times already. But here I am, right? Still dealing with this issue. But the good thing is that we have been able to fix the implement. So let me, let me take you to basically what we're trying to do today. So as you guys can see, we, we've been able to fix most of the implements. So come, let me show you the, the slasher that we're trying to use. So this is the drum mower. Basically, um, we are now attaching it. So this goes at the back of the tractor. It's on your right hand side. So as you drive straight, it cuts the grass on the right hand side. What it has is, it has these blades beneath it. Uh, right, so as it rotates, it cuts the grass and then it lays it down in between this nicely so that it's easy for the baler to pick it up. Um, 
So this one had a lot of issue. Um, the bearings were broken. I think the GS weren't fixing properly, so we had to um, repair that. But hopefully today we'll be able to use it. That is the goal. Um, the tractor, we are still not very, um, we are still not very, very sure about it yet in terms of its strength, but I'm also organizing to rent one for the meantime because I can't wait anymore. As far as these equipments are good, now we have to um, get a tractor anyhow that we can and start doing something. I can't wait anymore. As you can see, we have to like tack all these bolts just to make sure that it's, it's much stronger. And we also have the slasher, which is on standby. Once we have um, basically a good tractor, we can have both um, working at the same time. So hopefully this works. This is already 7 a.m. As you can see, we are all here um, trying to start work. Hopefully it works. And if it does work, of course, you guys will be seeing a lot of videos on about how it's doing and the way we are cutting. And we're gonna walk you guys through step by step so that if you have already bought Brachyria grass from us and you're thinking about this kill, I'm, I'm basically your guinea pig, you know, repeating all the mistakes and testing so that when you're ready to go commercial, you can come and I can show you or give you the advice of what you need and what you don't need to be able to harvest your grass successfully. So I'm going to end this video here and get back to work and we will record and send you more content on how we do today. So thank you so much for watching and stay tuned. Keep it the